In my previous video, I discussed the theory of circumpolar bodies in which I explained what are circumpolar bodies and I showed you the passage of a celestial body uh, with reference to a rational horizon diagram. So in today's video, I want to show you a worked example on how to solve numerical questions uh, based on circumpolar bodies. So today I take up one example and in the future I plan to take up more examples so that you can see the different ways questions are framed and can be solved in this topic. All right, so let's start. The question is that you have to compute the sextant meridian altitude of star Canopus. So when we say meridian altitude, that means the altitude of the star when it is at its meridian passage. All right. Now, circumpolar bodies are those bodies that do not rise or set, do not go below the rational horizon. That's the simplest definition. Uh, and the star's name here is uh, Canopus. These are some of the details you have to note down when you are uh, reading the question. The star is on its inferior meridian. Again, something to note down. It is on its inferior meridian. And uh, in my previous video, I showed you guys uh, what an inferior meridian is, what a superior or uh, upper meridian is. So I will not go back into that, but I'll show you here in the question what it all means again. All right. The date is 2nd of March 1992. So you would be needing the nautical almanac for 1992. If you don't have access to it, don't worry about it. Just look at the method that I used to solve the question. And then you can use the same method using the almanac of your choice or whichever is being taught to you to solve the question as well. All right. Now the ship's dr position or the dead reckoning position is given as 51 degrees 30 minutes south and 100 degrees 34 minutes west so that means we are in the southern hemisphere so the diagrams have to be drawn with reference to the southern hemisphere the height of i is given to us as 14 meters index error is 2 meters on the arc and you also have to find the LMT or the local mean time of the lower meridian passage of the star. Same star, Canopus, and you have to find the lower meridian passage time, local mean time. All right. So we'll get to that as well. So let's start with the questions. First thing that we do is uh, draw a diagram that roughly depicts uh, what is given to us in the question here. So what we have here is the star's passage or what we call is the star's uh, upper and lower meridian passage. All right. Now this of course is the inferior meridian when the star is at the position X dash. All right. Uh, this here is the celestial equator or what we call as the equinoctial. Right. And as I go along, I'll explain more. So I hope you have seen my videos on the rational horizon diagram or the PZX video that I have made. I'll give you the link to that video in the description section below. Otherwise, you can find it in the playlist for celestial navigation. Please watch that video. That will help you to understand uh, the rational horizon diagram better. All right. So keep we keep going then. Uh, so here, the first thing that we are given is the latitude. So the latitude is 51 degrees 30 minutes south. And that's why we have drawn this diagram with reference to the point of view of the southern hemisphere. Uh, this is the latitude. And in this case, the latitude is also equal to the distance SP. So the distance SP, and I will use a different length here, is the latitude here. Now, if you are asking me why, Please watch my previous video on the PZX triangle, rational horizon diagram, as well as circumpolar bodies. You will understand why. So this is uh, P is basically the Earth's pole, which has been projected onto the celestial sphere. And uh, the distance by which it moves with reference to north or south is the distance equal to the latitude of the body. All right. And similarly, the distance by which the WQ is drawn with reference to Z is again the latitude of the body. All right, so SP is normally equal to ZQ, which is the latitude of the body. Because Z is nothing but the observer's zenith. So it is us, the observer, position projected onto the celestial sphere. All right, I will not go deep into that. You please watch my other video. Otherwise, we'll go a bit uh, uh, off track and lose the point here. 
then we have the declination here the declination is nothing but the distance of the celestial body from the celestial equator that is the equinoctial so we have qx here qx here is the declination of the body all right just like our latitude is measured from reference to the equator on the earth's sphere uh, a celestial body latitude is measured with reference to the equinoctial because that is the celestial equator so the declination is 52 degrees 41.8 minutes south now you must be thinking where did you get this value from i got it from the almanac and i'll show you where i got it from uh, so let's go into the almanac so if i go into the almanac here you will see this is 2nd of march 1992 on top you can see the date and the year and you can see the star has been highlighted here that's the canopus the sha and the declination has been highlighted as well so you can see the sha value i will use it later and you can see the declination value as 52 degrees 41.8 minutes south is for canopus that is the star in question here so we take that value and go back so that's where i got my declination from and that is qx now in this regard pq is then 90 degrees why because just like the earth's pole is 90 degree away from the earth's equator the earth's pole when projected onto the celestial sphere is also equal to 90 degree it is 90 degrees away in terms of angular distance away from the celestial equator that is the equinoctial so if i use a different pen here pq here becomes 90 degrees all right so that will make it easy for us to find what we call is the polar distance or px px is the distance of the pole from the celestial body so we are talking about angular distances here of course so here qx or 90 minus qx that is 90 degrees minus the declination will give us the px so if you if you look at the diagram carefully 90 degrees minus qx will give you px px or the polar distance i will use this distance here 90 degrees minus px will give us 90 degrees minus qx will give us px so that's what we do we use 90 degrees minus qx so qx is nothing but the declination just to remind you again so 90 degrees minus 52 degrees 41.8 will give me the polar distance of px and we write it down now px also equals to px dash is the same polar distance as the star is a circumpolar body here all right now why we are saying px now because remember the star is on its inferior meridian and what we have to find is the information regarding the star when it is on its inferior meridian not when it's on its upper meridian where at x is but we can find out px dash because px equals px dash here which is also equal to px dash but what we have to find is the sx dash the sx dash is nothing but the true altitude of the body and that is what we have to find because we will use the true altitude to find the approximate sextant altitude of the body at the inferior meridian so sx dash if you look at the diagram carefully again sx dash is equal to sp minus px dash so sp again i have to use a different pen otherwise you must be thinking what's going on here so sp minus px dash will give me the sx dash all right so sp minus px dash is equal to xx dash sorry so sp is 51 degrees 30 minutes because this is the latitude and px dash is nothing but the polar distance that we calculated above and hence we get the true altitude as 14 degrees 11.8 minutes now you must be thinking the question says compute the sextant meridian altitude why have we calculated true altitude because using the true altitude we will be working backwards to calculate the sextant altitude so what you will do here now i have already pre-written it but please watch this part carefully you will put the true altitude value the true altitude value over here first don't look at the top first put the value here same value here 14 degrees 11.8 you will start from here and then you will work your way upwards all right so you start from here this will be the first step first step is here and then you work your way upwards so true altitude is 14 degrees 11.8 we are in the month of march 2nd of march so we'll find out the total correction of the star and we will reverse the sign every time we go up all right so first we for the true altitude of 14 degrees 11.8 
we go and find the total correction of the star. So we go back into the nautical almanac. I have to stop this page. I have to find out the true altitude. So the true altitude will be here. All right. So true altitude is found from where? From here. So this is for star. Although this says apparent altitude, we will use the true altitude value because we are working upwards. Over here will be minus 3.8. Why? Because our true altitude value is 14 degrees. 14.8 or 11 point or something like that. So that comes here. So pause the video again and you can see where I got it from and I'll show it to you again. So because our value is between our true altitude values between here and here. That's why I'll take minus 3.8. All right. So I'll go back. I will write minus 3.8. But what you have to do is you don't have to minus 3.8 from 11.8. You will add 3.8 as you go upwards. You will add 3.8 and that will give you 15.6 all right you will have to reverse it because you are working upwards you have to do everything opposite then once you get your apparent altitude you will get your height of i your height of i is for a distance of 14 meters so your height of i is for 14 meters you go back on the same page and you calculate your height of i so your height of i is for here is your height of i dip height of i is in meters so for 14 meters will be somewhere here between 13.8 and 14.2 you don't have to do any interpolation just take this figure here minus 6.6 .6. remember your height of i is always negative but because you are working upwards you will again add it whenever you see a negative sign you will add it so you add the height of i correction 6.6 .6 plus 15.6 will give you 14 degrees 22.2 you will add it only to the minutes and finally you have your index error index error is on the arc when it's on the arc it's negative but for you you will add it because you are working your way upwards so you will add two minutes to 22.2 and that will give you 24.2 so as a cross check make sure you go upwards by opposing the signs and then you can check for the values by going the normal way from top to down and see if it all works out or not if it doesn't then you have to correct for it all right so start from bottom go upwards so what you have now done is you have found out the sextant altitude that is the first part of the question so you have to compute the sextant altitude this is the sextant altitude computed that's the first part of the question or first part of the answer then the second part required us to find out the local mean time of the lower meridian passage so how do you do that well look at the lower meridian passage the LHA of the star is 180 degrees all right, at the upper meridian passage, it is 360 degrees. These are given figures. I have explained this in my previous video on circumpolar bodies. So the LHA star is nothing but the GHA Aries plus the SHA star plus east longitude or if it's west longitude, then it's minus west longitude. So it will be plus because we are in the west longitude, I have written minus. But if it's east longitude, then it will be east plus east longitude. All right, east is added, west is subtracted. Now, because in this case, it's west. I will not delete it. I don't want to keep east and confuse you. So this is where it goes. So what you can find out is the SHA star value. What you have is the longitude value. So longitude value is 100 degrees 34 minutes. And SHA star, where did we get SHA star from? Remember, we got it from the first page when we were on the 2nd of March. So what we'll do is we go back again so that in case you have forgotten it and you will say, Sam, I have forgotten it. You are always in a rush. You don't show it. Here it is. So I'll show it to you again. There is the SHA value for Canopus. 264 degrees 3 minutes. All right. So that's where I got my SHA value from. So my SHA value is 264 degrees 3 minutes. But I don't have my GHA Aries value because for that I need the time and I don't need, have the time. I have to find out the time. But I have the rest of the three. So what I can do is I can take these on the other side. So the signs will reverse and I can find out my approximate GHA Aries. So this will become 180 minus 264 plus 100 degrees 34 minutes, which gives me an approximate GHA Aries of 16 degrees 31 minutes. Now, if this is my GHA Aries when the star is on its inferior meridian, then I can find out now the local mean time. How can I do that? So if I find out my GHA Aries, I can find out my GMT time. So, for example, if my GHA is 16 degrees 31 minutes on the 2nd of March, 
I will just go back to the nautical almanac and see where do I have the value for 2nd of March as 16 degrees 31. So this is my 2nd of March. Now GH Aries is here. If I go down the column on 2nd of March, I don't have 16 degrees. The number closest I get is 10 degrees 36.6. After that it's 25 degrees. So 10 degrees 36.6 is the lowest I can go and that is for 14 hours. So I've got the hours now, but I don't have my full GH. So what I'll do is I'll go back here. So for 14 hours, I know I have my GHA 10 degrees 36.6, but my GHA that I calculated is 16 degrees 31.1 minutes. So how much do I have balance? I have 16 degrees minus 31 minus 10 degrees 36.6. I still have 5 degrees 54.4 minutes. This 5 degrees 54.4 minutes I can find out from the increments page for the GH Aries. So let's go and find out. All right. So what I'll do is I will go back into the increments page and you will have need some time, but I will make it fast. So this is 23 minutes. What you have to basically do is go down every increments page and for the column of Aries, find out where you get your 5 degrees 54 minutes. Alright, so you might have to start from the first page or if you have a good idea, start from the middle, then slowly go. The increments are slowly increasing for Aries. You won't find the answer anywhere else. So don't worry, you won't get confused. You will find the answer only in one place. So here I have found 5 degrees 54 minutes, close to it. So that gives me 23 minutes, 32 seconds. And I've got my remaining GHA as well. 5 degrees 54. So I cannot, oh, so 54.4 I need. So 23 minutes 34 seconds, is it better? 54.5, all right, so that's it. So 54.5 is closest to 54.4. So that's why I've got 23 minutes 34 seconds. All right, I've, I've tried to come as much close as possible. So I needed 54.4, but I've come up to 54.5. So you can either stop at 33 seconds, I have put up 34 seconds, it doesn't matter. You come, try and come as close as possible. That's why my remaining GT time is 23 minutes 34 seconds. But this is my GMT time for the GHA of 16 degrees 31 minutes. This is my GMT time. It's not my GHA. So I will delete this. This is my GMT time from the nautical almanac. Once you have your GMT, put in your LIT. What is LIT? LIT is nothing but longitude divided by 15. Take your longitude 100 degrees 34 minutes divided by 15. You will get 6 hours. 42 minutes 16 seconds when longitude is west GMT is the best so you will subtract it from GMT if longitude was east GMT would have been least you would have added it to the GMT to find your not LMP but LMT LMT local mean time meridian passage so once I add it to the LMT time my LIT if I add to the GMT I get my LMT this is my second part of the question and this is done. All right. So if you want to know more about the relationship between GMT, LIT, LMT and all these things, I have made number of videos, hundreds of videos on celestial navigation. Please go and find my playlist on celestial navigation and watch those videos. I'm assuming you are very good with those concepts and that's why I don't spend too much time in explaining these concepts every time. Otherwise, the video becomes very long. It's already very long already. I try to keep my videos very short because I know students get, tend to get bored. So if you have any questions, please write in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Uh, if I find the time for surely, I will answer them. Uh, otherwise, let me know what you thought about this video. I'll take up more questions about circumpolar bodies in the future so that you get an idea of how different kinds of questions are framed and how should you go about answering them. All the best with your studies, guys.